بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين نويت التعلم والتعليم والتذكر والتذكير والنفع والانتفاع والإفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وبسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والدعاء على الهداء والدلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى <coughs> السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, Before we start inshallah let's just read a small portion from the Quran inshallah Just a second أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين <تصفيق> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يوقنون أولئك على هدى من ربهم وأولئك هم المفلحون صدق الله العظيم بسم الله بسم الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته um, I myself, my, my name is Asim Hussain, inshallah ta'ala. We'll be going on this journey together, inshallah ta'ala, learning this beautiful language, the language of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, before we set off on this journey, always as it is with setting off on a journey, first one ought to know where one is headed and how is one heading to their destination and possibly the most important question of all why why is one undertaking the journey in the first place and this is very much this is very much um central um to our re religion which is why the question why our intention why do we want to do something and um the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said niyatu mu'min khairun min amalihi the intention of a believer is better than his action, i.e. the intention is essential um, and indispensable with regards to the action. The Prophet said actions are only by their intentions. So thereby we seek to inshallah ta'ala first and foremost dwell into what are our intentions for learning this beautiful language? Why do we seek to learn it in the first place? Which is... Um, um, and we need to begin. We need to begin by first and foremost <coughs> understanding that these intentions are essential. Are essential how? Because any action which lacks the proper intention is worthy of chastisement. So thereby, uh, great acts become meaningless because of um, deficient intentions, and small acts become great because of the intentions behind them. Yeah, so thereby, inshallah ta'ala, before we start, before we start, we look at why we want to learn Arabic in the first place. What What is the point? Why? Yeah, inshallah ta'ala, bismillah. Just put together a small 
presentation, inshallah ta'ala, about why we don't want to do that. Um, bismillah. Um, yeah. Um, 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 are you able to see the screen which I've shared? <laughs> I assume that means yes. Um, okay, good. Jazakallah khairan. Um, so, Bismillah. First and foremost, what all of us are very well aware of, and this is a part of our belief, no doubt, that the the speech of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the Quran, which is Kalamullahi Taala, was has been revealed to us in Arabic. So, this Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has spoken to us in Arabic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken to us in Arabic and this is in reality the the central, uh, the, the main reason around which everything else revolves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken to us in Arabic in this beautiful language which we are going to see in this language of Arabic thereby it becomes necessary for us to engage with this language engage with this language the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said um, 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 uh, that the rank which the Quran, the, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has over all other speech is the same rank which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has over his creation. That the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the rank of the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or all other speech is the same rank which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself has or the red or, or all of his creation. Because the speech is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is um, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is from his divine attributes subhanahu wa ta'ala is from his divine attributes subhanahu wa ta'ala and thereby the the speech of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which has been revealed to us in the quran which has been revealed to us in the quran is inherently inherently arabic Arabic and thereby our teachers tell us the rank which Arabic has or any other language other than it is the rank that the Quran has over any other speech because the Quran is inherently Arabic. The Quran is nothing but Arabic. The moment it's translated, it's no longer Quran. It's a translation of the Quran. Yeah, it's a human endeavor to explain the Quran or to explain the Quran to someone who does not understand the language so thereby the arabic the rank which arabic in and itself has or other languages is uh, is something which we cannot in reality grasp is something in which we cannot in reality grasp um sorry um and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this that the quran is inherently arabic وَكَذَلِكَ أَنزَلْنَاهُ قُرْآنًا عَرَبِيًّا That we have, we have sent it down. And thus we have sent it down as an Arabic Qur'an. That we have sent it down as an Arabic Qur'an. And Allah also, elsewhere he says, وَكَذَلِكَ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ قُرْآنًا عَرَبِيًّا And thus we have revealed it to you as an Arabic Qur'an. That the Qur'an is inherently Arabic. You cannot separate, you cannot separate revelation from Arabic. You cannot. Yeah. So thereby the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Arabic. This is the first and foremost reason why as Muslims, as those who submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who seek his pleasure subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we seek to engage with this revelation which he has given to us, a revelation which has given to us as guidance, as huda, as a healing shifa, as a mercy, a rahma, as a criterion, furqan, that the Quran, that, that we learn Arabic is because we see we seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in reality that the speech of uh, that the kalamullah ta'ala was revealed in Arabic is not something which happened by mere chance or something which just happened to be because the Quran happened to be revealed amongst the Arabs or that um, uh, uh, um, 
for those of us that, that, that we understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing in his creation happens by chance. Everything happens by his will and his power. And behind every action of his subhanahu wa ta'ala is infinite wisdom subhanahu wa ta'ala. So thereby, it is not that the Quran that the Quran had to be in Arabic because it would be sent down upon an Arab people. La. It's the, it's the completely the other way around. It's completely the other way around. That the, khalas, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala predates anyone. The speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eternal. Yeah? The speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eternal. There was the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before there was any Arab. Yeah? So the Arab, so Arabic is not something which is halas. It, it's, it's circumstantial as it relates to the Quran. Rather, it is something which is inherent. And innate to the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not just tells us that that, that that is the nature of the Quran in and of itself, He also explains to us why that is the case. Why did He do that? Why did He do, make, it, make the Quran in Arabic? Why did He decree that the Quran be revealed in Arabic? Um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Inna ja'alnahu Quranan Arabiyan la'allakum ta'qilun. So indeed, we have decreed it as an Arabic Quran so that you may understand it. So the Quran has been, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us what? The Quran has been revealed in Arabic so that we may understand it. Yeah, i.e. there is no other language which could, which could, um, uh, which could bear this burden of conveying revelation, of conveying God's speech, other than this noble language, the language of Arabic. Yeah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did that so that we could understand, we could understand. Yeah, and it does not befit us now to say that we do not understand the Quran because it is in Arabic, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us the exact opposite, i.e. the Quran is in Arabic so that you can understand it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again elsewhere says the same, Inna anzalnahu Qur'anan arabiyyan la'allakum ta'qilun. Very um, similar. Um, so thereby, it's in Arabic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Qur'an in Arabic because, why? Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains, so that we may understand it. So that we may understand it. That this is um, this is the reason which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives that why he revealed the Quran in Arabic. Yeah. And the other thing, the other thing which is um which one needs to um always bear in mind, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to us in Arabic, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa spoke to us in Arabic. He is Arabi in the sense he spoke Arabic. We're not talking about him being Arab. Yeah, the, that, no doubt the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he is an Arab. And, um, and the Arabs have been honored by the fact that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent among their midst. And it's it's an honor for the Arabs that he is an Arab, and not that the Prophet. It's not a, in any way an honor for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is the one who gives honor to others rather than anything else, which gives honor to him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from within the creation. And the pro, and the point we're talking about here is not the ethnicity, but the language. The, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Arabi in the sense he spoke Arabic. He spoke Arabic, and the fact that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke. Arabic tells us something, tells us something. What? Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا بِلِسَانِ قَوْمِهِ لِيُبَيِّنَ لَهُمْ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he says, we have not sent any messenger to a people except with their language, such that he can explain, he can clarify the affair to them. That this is the reason that the, 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 the messengers were always sent with the language of their people. What does that mean for us then? What does that mean for us? The ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what does it mean for us? What it means for us is that Arabic is our language. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent with our language, i.e. our fitra, our innate disposition 
within us is a connection to Arabic, even if we perceive not. That this is the language which is ours in reality, not circumstantially, that we happen to have been born in some part of the world. So because of that, we speak whatever it is, either be, be it Urdu or Mirpuri or Patwari or English or whatever, whichever language it is, doesn't matter. That is all circumstantial. You just happen to be born in such and such place. Your connection to those languages is circumstantial. You just happen to be born into a, a certain environment. But our connection with Arabic is absolute. Doesn't matter where you are from. It doesn't matter you're white or black or brown or anything. Doesn't matter where you are from, what color you are, what your ethnicity is. Doesn't matter. Because our connection to Arabic is absolute. Why? Because it's the language of our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yeah, and anyone, anyone for a moment, if they were to think and reflect on their life, reflect on their life and consider what are the things which are important for me in my life? What is it really important? What do I want to do in my life? And a person who is serious about their religion, a person who in reality is concerned with their religion will no doubt have to come necessarily to the conclusion that they need to learn the Arabic language. They need to learn the Arabic language. Why? Because this is the language of your Lord. Your Lord spoke to you in Arabic. What is more important for you, for us, than to engage with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us? Yeah? So this is our language, yeah? Doesn't matter what, whatever other language you speak. This is our language, period. It's the language of the Muslims. It's, it's that which brings us together, period. Yeah, because people bond over, one of the key things which people bond over is what? Is language. Yeah, doesn't matter which part of the world you go. If someone speaks your language, you immediately have a feeling of connection with that person. A feeling of bonding with that person just purely on the basis of the language. Purely on the basis of the language. Why not just have that kind of a bond and relationship with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? With Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? Why not? First and foremost, let's begin with all of us. Be it from, the, from Mauritania in the West to Malaysia in the East. Yeah, be be it from Bosnia in uh, from Bosnia in the north to South Africa in the south, be it from anywhere, doesn't matter. We bond over Arabic. Arabic is essential part of us. Yeah, and Arabic, like you mentioned, is integral to Islam. Like it's not something that just happens to be all. Oh, well, the Quran happens to have been revealed in Arabic, or, or yeah, uh, the Prophet ﷺ happened to speak Arabic because he was from the Arab. La, it's not at all like that. It's not at all like that. Yeah, nothing happens without reason. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, especially as it uh, as it is to be with the the final revelation. Umar radiAllahu anhu. In his, in his Khilafat, in his, it was during his Khilafat that Islam started spreading into um, non-Arab lands, non-Arab lands, like the Persians and the Byzantines. Um, the Khilafat of Sayyidina Abu Bakr anhu, was, was basically, he, he spent, it was a short Khilafat, and he was basically preoccupied with dealing with all those who had apostated, or Hurub al-Ridda, the apostasy wars. So in the time of Umar radiallahu anhu, Islam spreads into non-Arab lands. Non-Arab lands. And what, what does Sayyidina Umar, what, seeing that non-Arabs are not coming into the fold of Islam, what does he say? What does, what, what does he say? تَعَلَّمُوا الْعَرَبِيَّةَ وَعَلِّمُوهَا فَإِنَّهَا مِن دِينِكُمْ Learn Arabic. Learn Arabic and teach it to others. Why? Because it is from your religion. It is a a part of your religion, a part of your religion. It is an inherent part of your religion. So teach, learn, and teach it. Yeah, this, this is this is how 
the very first non-Arabs when they came into the con um, into the fold of Islam, halas, what was the of the first things that they learned? Arabic. They did not look at oh, let's translate this book into our language. La, this is a very recent thing, and in reality, it shows. It shows what. It shows the level of our commitment and connection to our religion, isn't it? Rather than us learn Arabic that we want to translate, which is a very recent phenomenon. That we seek to translate th things away from the original. Yeah, but but the point being, no doubt, there, there is no doubt there's benefit in that. There's immense benefit in that and no one is saying no. But the point being, let us contrast ourselves to the perspective of the early Muslims. What was their view? Uh, that when they entered into the fold of Islam, they saw that this is something indispensable. Khalas, we need to do it. And say the Ubay ibn Ka'b of the senior most sahaba, of the senior most companions, what did he say? Ta'allamu al-Arabiyyata kama ta'allamuna hifd al-Qur'an. Like, learn. Yeah? Learn Arabic. Learn Arabic the same way you learn the memorization of the Quran, i.e., that you that that which you give um uh, consider it to be essential. Like anyone who became Muslim at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, what would the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam do? He would immediately he would pair them up with a senior Sahabi, a senior Sahabi, as in someone who has been Muslim for a long time, uh, and they would teach them. Um, the Quran that which had been revealed until then, i.e., to memorize that which had been revealed until then, and the rulings and the understanding of the Quran and the rulings of what to do and what not to do, and teach them in that. Aspect. So, so this was some. This was how Muslims came into the fold of Islam, and Ubay ibn Kaab radiallahu anhu saying, "Hakada, you have to learn Arabic as well." Hakada, you have to learn Arabic as well. This is something central to your religion. This is something central to your religion. And Arabic, the language, it's not just a language. It's something much more profound than that. And no doubt it has to be because it's the language of revelation. It has to be. Yeah, it cannot be any other way. And Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu commenting on the Arabic language again, what did he say? تَعَلَّمُ الْعَرَبِيَّةَ فَإِنَّهَا تُثَبِّتُ الْعَقْلَ وَتَزِيدُ فِي الْمُرُوءَةِ Like learn Arabic. Why? Verily, for it grounds the intellect. Yeah, of the sciences that we learn in language, it's the science of logic. The ulum al-alat which we learn, we learn when when you go through an Islamic curriculum of studies. As we, the four, the four uh, ancillary sciences of the four of there are there are much more than that, but of the essential four, the first four sciences that you learn, and these are to, uh, these are considered to be in, tied into language, which is what. You learn grammar, you learn morphology, you learn rhetoric, and you learn logic. You learn logic. Why? Because it grounds the intellect. How so? How so? That, that which you do not know how to express with regards to language, where your language is deficient, your intellect is also deficient in that regard. Yeah, You cannot think, you cannot contemplate, you cannot reflect on something which you do not have the ability to articulate which you do not have the ability to articulate, your mind is limited by your grasp of language, by your grasp of language, yeah? You cannot compute that which you cannot articulate, yeah? The, the extent of your intellect is the extent of your language. So for example, so if you know a computer language, for example, if those of you who are familiar with computer languages, if you do not know how to achieve a certain task, you do not know some aspect of the language, there is no way you can get the program to do that for you. The program cannot compute for you that which you are not able to articulate for it in terms of its language. Yeah, some functions which you do not understand, some concepts which you do not understand, and you are not able to put them to practice. Halas, that's the extent of your intellect. That's the extent of your ability, your computing ability. Yeah, so your intellect is directly related to your language, your ability to articulate, and your ability to reflect and ponder and contemplate is all tied in. It's all tied in. So learning and Arabic more so than any other language. 
like every language has this element and no doubt the age that we live in we see a complete a complete deterioration of language yeah forget like proper language people can't even write proper sentences but can't even spell words nowadays yeah Khalas, this is the extent of our intellect in today's day and age. Well, and this is not something unintentional. This is completely intentional. Why? Because if people are trained in language, they're trained in thought. They're trained in thought. A, per, a, a person's ability to articulate and a person's ability to think go hand in hand. And, the, and that is true for any language, but Arabic, khalas. Then some, then some. And it elevates one's character. And it elevates one's character. Why? It, it facilitates the nurturing of one's character. Why? Because one who becomes grounded in language, one who becomes grounded in language, realizes, realizes that class, there's, there's more than one way to look at things. Yeah? There's more than one way to look at things. It's not that I am the center of the universe. What I understand from what I say or someone else says is what it is, as opposed to something else, the person is now able to empathize. The person is now able to put themselves, look at things from a perspective other than their own. They start, they, they, they now develop an ability to be, uh, to, to stop being self-referential, i.e. make themselves the center of things, i.e. Self, a self-centered approach, as in what I understood or, or is the only way to understand. La, khalas. So, le so learning Arabic is not just an academic journey, it's a spiritual journey. It's a spiritual journey. And what did uh, um, Imam uh, Ash-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala say? ومن نظر في اللغة رق تبعه the one who takes to studying the language a لغة language but specifically Arabic more so than any other language رق تبعه that their nature becomes soft that their nature becomes soft why why because they don't just see the rules of the language they don't see the just the science of the language, but they see the art behind it, the beauty. Yeah, the beauty behind it. They're able to now appreciate aesthetics. They're able to appreciate beauty. Yeah. The, 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 that now, this is not just an intellectual awakening. It's a spiritual awakening for the person. Yeah, so it's not just you're going to be learning a language. Nah. This is actually like, this is something much, much, much deeper than that. And, our, and we need to have our intentions with regards to that. Because actions are readily only by their intentions. Yeah, so this is not just a language which you are learning. And the Prophet Sallallahu he told us that this language, khalas, like in every letter, that is divine blessing. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا أقول ألف لا ميم حرف. I do not say that ألف لا ميم is a letter. ألف is a letter. Lam is a letter. Meem is a letter. You draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with ألف. You draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with Lam. And you draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with Meem. And so on and so forth. Which other language has this? Yeah. So thereby, like the Arabic, the Quran and Islam, they are all inseparable. The, the Arabic is inseparable. Like even things which are not necessarily re required according to law, like this, Arabic is still an important part for us. Like for example, many of us who may have who have been born into um, Muslim families, most of our names are Arabic names. There is no legal requirement for this. There is no legal requirement for this. Your name can be anything good. Yeah. That's why there is no requirement for anyone who becomes Muslims to change Muslim to change their name. There is no legal requirement. The Prophet ﷺ only changed the name of people whose name had a meaning which was unbecoming of a Muslim. That's the only instance where he would change people's names. There is no requirement. Why do we have why, why do we have Arabic names? Because of our connection to this language. And we would not have it any other way, do would we? We would not have it any other way. 
Yeah. Because of her, like Allah, our love for the language, our love for the language. And there are things which are khalas. Like they, there, is, there is no other other than in Arabic. You can't have another other than in Arabic. Yeah, the shahada in and of itself is, is according to some, it has to be articulated in Arabic as well. It has to be articulated in Arabic as well. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Yeah. So there are things like Arabic is indispensable. The Quran, obviously, we know. Allah Ta'ala, I don't want to go into this now. Like, like the, very briefly, the, like, like the Muslims took the preservation of the Arabic language as seriously as they took the preservation of the Quran. From the very beginning. From the very beginning. Yeah? Beginning, uh, well, the most notable name for the beginning is um, Abu Aswad al Ali, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, who was a companion of Sayyidina Ali, Karamallah um, um, that, that the, the, the Muslims, they realize the, the same way they realize if we don't preserve the Quran, the Quran will be lost. They realize immediately as well that if we don't preserve Arabic, khalas, the Quran will be lost like, regardless. Like the preservation of the Quran is not just preservation of the writing of the Quran, the words and the letters and the ayat of the Quran is the preservation of the language which contain in which those those ayat are revealed. So what what would it mean if you have the book and you have no means to understand the book? That means the Quran would not have been preserved. Hasha impossible. So the Muslims understood that from the very beginning, khalas, we need the same way we need to preserve the Quran, the same, exactly, we need to preserve Arabic as well. And they took to it the same way they took to preserving the Quran because both go hand in hand, both go hand in hand. And this is again, yeah, um, so th these are some of the not notable scholars of the Arabic language, the grammarians and the linguists of Islam and and some of them are considered possible some of the greatest linguists of all time of all time, um, and um, and the one potentially and and of them who are not Arab, <laughs> they are not Arab, yeah, they are not Arab. Why? Khalas. They took to this religion out of the conviction in their hearts, out of the faith which permeated their souls. Khalas, they took to the, this language as their own. This is my language. And this is something we should all have with us. This is my language. This is the language of my Lord. This is the language of my prophet. This is my language, period. It's not so, I'm not learning someone else's language. La. I'm not learning someone else's language. I'm learning my language. This is my language. Is my Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and is my Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm not learning someone else's language. <laughs> La, this is our language. Arabic is the language of the Muslims. In fact, in fact, <laughs> that be, before the Khilafah was brought down by the enemies of Islam, before the, the Ottoman Khilafah was brought down by the enemies of Islam, of the things which the uh, great Abdul Hamid, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, the second, he wanted to legislate was that Muslims, everyone need to learn Arabic. Everyone needs to learn Arabic. And he himself, <laughs> he's a Turk. Yeah, this is this is the understanding of uh, of the people. Uh, this is the understanding that class Arabic is indispensable for us. To, uh, to realize the potential of our religion in our personal lives. Yeah. And, um, and here, um, um, Al-Khalil ibn Ahmad al-Farahidi, rahimahullah ta'ala, one of the greatest grammarians potentially ever, he was the first one to compile a dictionary. And he did this in the 8th century, common era. Um, um, eight Century. This is just a hundred years after the passing of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Hundred years after Hijrah, and this was just this is just an aspect of uh, the, the preservation of the language. They, they preserved it in many different ways, which is not necessarily um, what we're going to go into now. Uh, but the point being, just for comparison, 
this was this happened in the eighth century. Eighth century. The first dictionary in the English language was the beginning of the seventh. This is in the eighth century, almost a thousand years ago, almost a millennium ago. It's actually the Muslims. By looking at the Muslims, others realize, oh, we need to start preserving our language as well. Yeah, so Arabic, Arabic is essential. And it is said that he died, he died out of grief. Um, um, because and with regards to a debate in the la language that he was um, um he was pro he was proven wrong um yeah okay, we have systemization and canonization and formalization of knowledge in every aspect in every science of the religion likewise thought within um, within language as well. So at the beginning, you have the school of uh, the the the, Ku, the Kufan school and the Basran school. At the head of the Kufan school, Imam Al Kisa'i rahimahullah taala, and at the head of the Basran school, Imam Siwa Sibawi rahimahullah taala. Yeah, and then you have later the development of the school of Baghdad and the school of Egypt, the school of Mis. So alas, like every other science in the religion, we have schools of thought or how. How this language is going to be systematized, formalized, codified, preserved, and transmitted? Yeah, because our language, our language has been preserved. Class is frozen in time. Arabic is frozen in time. I'm not talking about what the dialects which people speak commonly, the colloquial dialects which people speak. Our formal understanding of Arabic is frozen in time in the time of revelation. Yeah. Just compare that with a, another language like English, like 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 even from the time like a Victorian time or an Elizabethan time, like the time of like Shakespeare. You don't speak, you don't go around not speaking. How art thou, do you? Yeah, people look you stay up and down. Like oh, yeah. Alas, the language has just moved on. The language has completely moved on. But our language is frozen in time. It's frozen in eternity. It's frozen. Yeah, class on the basis of revelation, on the basis of revelation. Yeah, I won't go into that now. So the point being, every aspect of our tradition relies on the preservation and transmission of Arabic. Yeah, the same way the Quran has been pres preserved and transmitted, the same way that the Hadith have been preserved and transmitted, and the same way that the understandings of the Quran and the Hadith have been preserved and transmitted, generation after generation after generation, all of this would have not been possible except with the preservation and transmission of Arabic. If we did not have Arabic, everything and everything is game over, it's finished, it's finished, yeah? So this, this is why you need to learn Arabic. Every, all of us need to be learning Arabic. Why? Because alas, it's just a no-brainer. Yeah, it's absolutely essential. Yeah, and perhaps, yes, many, possibly all of us, if not most of us, are not Arabs. Yeah, so Arabic, we have not grown up speaking um, or listening to or being exposed to Arabic, potentially. Yeah, um, no, no worries, no big deal. Yeah, everything. Yeah, um, um, the scholars, they say, خلاص, the recompense is commensurate with the toil, with the effort. Yeah, so, and, and Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, we shouldn't want it any other way because this is how our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala um, intended it to be. And, uh, um, and we are pleased with the decree of our Lord. Why so? Um, before we carry on, yes. Um, sorry, are you not able to see anything on the screen? No. Oh, subhanAllah. It's been... I've been showing you slides, isn't it? And uh, it's not been coming up. Okay. Is it fine now? Yes, it's fine now. Thank yes. you. It is a Apologies. Yeah. I realized it a That's bit okay. too late. Anyways. Um, yeah. 
so al ajru ala qadr al mashaqqa so uh, your actions uh, خلاص, your action your uh, the recompenses in um is in accordance with the effort yeah so alhamdulillah you get to learn from scratch and you get to make your intention for learning it from scratch that every single letter that you learn you learn it with the intention of drawing closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah so you do so you get to make an so for every single step you have reward with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you inshallah ta'ala you have the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah and alhamdulillah alhamdulillah myself myself i'm ha- like alhamdulillah i consider this like like from the beauty of our religion that i learned arabic not from an arab i did not learn it from an arab i learned it from my teacher who is pakistani yeah it's it's not that that was not a language that was not the language which he grew up with either and this is the beauty this is the beauty of islam and the beauty of la- the, this language which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is not for exclusively for the arabs la. and this is so and this is what uh, this is something beautiful khalas. like like, you, like we tell the arabs khalas, this language is not yours this language is not yours this language all of us is, is the i have an equal right to this language the same which you have yeah khalas. yeah it's the same yeah no the arab does not have more right over this language than any non arab we all have equal right to this language okay yeah that was a bit about why we should be learning arabic like the, like like what should our intentions be like what what is the point of learning arabic yeah so so inshallah ta'ala hopefully there was some benefit in that um any thoughts comments or questions okay so bismillah um was there a question or some something yeah when is the actual class begin? <laughs> uh, uh, this was a part of the actual class, but uh, you mean the co- the actual learning bit, inshallah ta'ala. Yeah, so we're going to talk about that now. Anything else? And inshallah ta'ala. So about the course, like as the course um, was, uh, as the course was advertised, um, it's for complete beginners. It's for complete beginners. Those of us who do not know any Arabic at all. Any Arabic at all. Yeah. So in this 12 weeks, what we're going to do is we're going to start from the very beginning, from the alphabet. Yeah. We're going to go through the alphabet, recognizing letters, their sounds, how letters come together to form words in Arabic. Um, how words are formed, so s- slowly start reading and um, getting to a point, inshallah ta'ala, in these 12 weeks where we are able to fa- um, read um, fairly comfortably, inshallah ta'ala, starting from the very basics. And then after these 12 weeks, in the same time, um, we will now then move to, uh, we'll start a new course, which is to now learn the Arabic language. So this is just to get ourselves used to just being able to read the language yeah being able to just read arabic and then we'll start a new course in the same time we'll continue from this um to um do what to basically uh, learn um the language as in to understand the language to understand the language so this so this 12 weeks is just to, to for complete beginners who do not um, who have not had the opportunity so far to learn anything of Arabic, or they are, um, um, or they know, but they are not very confident. They know, uh, they feel they know very little. So you start from the alphabet, from scratch, um, from square one, and then we work our way through it. Inshallah, Taala. Yeah. So that's what we are going to be doing um, in this course, Inshallah, Taala, and with some. Um, so is the 12 weeks only alphabet and reading um there will be some focus inshallah ta'ala um um on uh re- oh, so just a second uh, there's quite a few um sorry 
Uh, is so I'll go through the questions here. Is the 12 weeks only alphabet and reading? So so we have yeah, so we'll be starting with the alphabet. And um, it might be a good idea, even for those who have um learned um uh, who know to read a bit still to go through this because the um going through a formal process of learning is going to be beneficial nonetheless so for example say if i know running I, I mean any any human being can run but if i have a trainer who's going to teach me to run properly then no doubt i'm going to benefit same way with swimming or anything anything um um for just for as an example many of us might have learned to read um, um, with the Urdu alphabet, with the Urdu alphabet, not with the Arabic alphabet, but the Urdu alphabet, which in and of itself um, is not ideal and does not necessarily um, um, allow you to read the best way in which you can read. Yeah. So you might have learned Alif, Be, Te, Te. So there's no sound Be, Te. There's no sound like that in Arabic. Yeah. The A sound is not there. Yeah. Um, it's called an imala, yeah. Um, in fact, it's 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 only in one place in the Quran where you do that, but that's an exception. You, you learn, like for example, if I'm learning English, yeah, I wouldn't learn it with the Turkish alphabet, a b j uh, ch d a. It's incorrect, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Just to say, so so thereby, so even if you know the alphabet already. Inshallah, there will be some benefit for you that um, um, that that we'll be learning that proper Arabic alphabet, the proper Arabic alphabet, and Inshallah, Taala, there'll be an element where we'll be focusing on trying to read the Quran as well. Inshallah, Taala, trying to read the Quran. Okay, um, um, so that that's what we'll be doing. So at the end of the twelve weeks, Inshallah, Taala, also depends on how much effort you put in outside the classes. Because um, 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 the more effort you put in to try to force yourself to learn to read, the better it will be for you. Um, um, so the intention is by the end of the course, inshallah, ta'ala, the 12 weeks, you'll be in a comfortable position um, with regards to reading. With regards to reading and ready to start the next course, which will be learning the language in and of itself, trying to understand the language. Yeah. Um, so that's the first question. Assalamualaikum. If we know how to read but do not understand the language, should we still attend now or join in 12 weeks? So that's that's I, I think I've answered that as well, isn't it? Um, um, so there will there, there inshallah there will be benefits in learning um, um, the proper Arabic alphabet if you have learned the Urdu alphabet, for example. Um, so there will be some benefit, but if you wanted to join after 12 weeks, that's fine as well. We shouldn't. Um, um, there will be benefit in attending the 12 weeks, but um, it won't necessarily be critical. Uh, if there are students among us who know how to read and write well and are ready to begin learning the language, so then inshallah ta'ala be patient for 12 weeks. And uh, once we are finished with this course, then we'll be starting that inshallah ta'ala. Will we be also learning the makharij of each letter? Uh, to a certain degree, yes. Uh, but not a lot. Um, so maharij, for those who don't know the term, is the um, the point of articulation of letters. How letters are articulated. Um, yes. So the um, uh, um, so um, and the uh, the point of articulation of the letters. Yeah. Um, is um, is no doubt you need to you know, have some understanding of it in order to uh, be able to articulate the letter. Uh, especially if it's a letter which you're not used to articulating. For example, al the dod. It's not a letter which you do not. Um, um, it's, it's, a, it's a letter unlike any other letter. That's why Arabic is known as lughat al dod, yeah, the language of the dod, because there's no other language which has a letter like that. So, yeah, there's some fo focus on maharij, but not a lot. Yeah, only to the extent that we need. Um, yeah, and on a needly basis, inshallah ta'ala. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, khalas, the payments, yeah, that, that you deal with the admin, um, please. Um, uh, okay. Um, anything else? Anything else? Any other questions anyone has? 
You can unmute yourself and ask. That's easier for me rather than trying to go through the messages. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Please please go ahead. Uh, brother, uh, this post is only for adults. So actually, I was sorry. I can't hear you. As well. Actually, I was looking for my daughters as well. <clears throat> Uh, if the I still can't hear you. Um, you yeah, it might me. be easier than in that case. Either you fix your microphone or you type, please. Yeah, type your question. Anything else anyone would like to ask? Okay, so khair, inshallah, ta'ala. If there's anything, just ask. Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, you don't need to wait for Hello, me to, this is prompt you to from ask India. any question. Just feel free to ask. Hello. Yeah? Um, questions are always welcome. Um, and encouraged. Hello. And, okay, we'll leave that, all of that. Um, what we'll do now before we finish, inshallah, ta'ala, we'll get started at a basic level, inshallah, ta'ala. Um, what we will do is... Um, yeah, we'll go to the first book, inshallah ta'ala. Okay. So this is there. So we'll start here, inshallah ta'ala. The first book, which is there in your shared folder. This is the, um, is there a question? What is this? What's the question? Can my daughters attend this course Saturday and Sunday? This is the only time for this course. I'm, I'm unfortunately, I'm, I have other, other teaching commitments on other days. This is the only time, yeah? This, yeah. As advertised on the course. Um, so coming back to the, so we're starting inshallah ta'ala with the letters. Yeah, the this is the Arabic alphabet. The Arabic alphabet. Okay, the alphabet, uh, the alphabet of a language is basically all the letters within that language. Okay, and these are the letters within the Arabic language. Yeah, letters, these letters are known as huruf al hijaiya um, al-Huruf al-Hijaiya or al-Huruf al-Abjadiya. That, that's how it's known in Arabic, the Arabic alphabet. Um, and these are the letters. In Arabic, in Arabic, there are um, there are twenty um, eight letters. There are 28 letters in the Arabic alphabet, 28 letters plus the alif. OK, 28 letters plus the alif. And why we say plus the alif, we'll come to that, inshallah, ta'ala, because the alif, again, for those of you who have learned um, the Urdu alphabet, th this is something which will be new to you. The alif is um, is a unique letter in the Arabic language. Yeah, it's an it's almost like a deficient letter it cannot do every it cannot do a lot of the things which other letters can do that's why alif is by itself and then the remaining 28 letters um they constitute so these together the 28 plus the one constitute the arabic alphabet okay so you have the alif the ba ba okay there's no b sound in arabic yeah ba yeah, and the other benefit of going through this course, you learn the proper Arabic terms for, um, like for example, those of you who know Zayr Zabar Pesh, that's not Arabic, that's Urdu. Yeah, in, Ar in Arabic, you have Fatha Dumma Kasra. Yeah, Fatha Dumma Kasra. And so on and so forth. So if you go through the course, you'll learn the actual ba basis of the language as it relates to Arabic as opposed to Urdu. Um, so you have Alif. So everyone repeat after me. You don't need to unmute yourselves. I don't know how it would work if all of us unmuted, uh, all of you unmuted yourselves, but repeat after me. So Alif is the letter, and then you have Ba, Ba, Ta. So go to, so this is Alif. This letter here is Alif, okay? Ba, Ba, it's the same sound as English. Ta, Ta. With your tongue between the teeth. Ta, ta. So this is jim, jim, jim. Ha, ha. Ha, in your throat, not ka, ka. No, there's no ka in Arabic. Ha, ha. Dal. Dal. 
the, the, again with your tongue between the teeth, the same as tha, tha, the, thal, thal, ra, ra, za or zai, za or zai, you can say it either way, za or zai, seen, seen, repeat, yeah, everyone repeating after me, seen, Sheen, Sheen, Sod, Sod, Dod, Do, Do. Um, we'll come to how to do it properly. Try what what you can for now. Uh, um, the Dod is at the back of your tongue, yeah, by trapping the sound against the roof of your mouth. Al, Do, Do, Dod, Dod. Okay, there's no zwad or anything like that. It's ba, baad. And then ta, ta. Va, va. The same like tha, tha, va, va. Ain, ain. Ra, rain. The same like you do kha. There's no g in Arabic. There's no g sound. This is r, r, rain, rain. Fa, fa. This is again a sound which is um, you sh uh, probably new to a few people. Ka, ka, ka. The ka is at the very back of your tongue. It's not the same like a kaf, ka, ka, like the English sound, ka, 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 as back as you can go on your tongue. Yeah? Ka, 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 and then kaf, kaf. Lam, lam. Meme, meme, this is, Meem. Noon. Noon. Wow. Again, wow is by circling the lips. Those of you, those of us who have an Ur Urdu heritage, we say va, va, wow. Not va, wa. Like in English, water. Wa, wa. Like the W. Wa. Wow. Wow. Ha, ha, and this ha is different to the ha. This ha is where you constrict the sound as it comes out. This sound, ha, that's a ha. This is just breathing out. Ha, ha, just breathe out. Ha, ha. And the Hamza is different to the Ayn, which you looked at. Ayn, again, you constrict the sound. The, the Ha and the Ayn from the same place. Ha, A, A. Yeah, A. As opposed to the Hamza here, which is A, nothing. You just let the sound out. A, as opposed to A of the Ayn. Okay? And then it's just the Ya written two different ways. It's Ya, Ya. Okay? Um, so these are the letters. These are the names of the letters, not necessarily the sounds of the letters. Yeah. Some letters, the names and the sounds, they are the same. Yeah. So the ba sound is the sound is ba like the but the jim the sound is like ja ju g aj and so on and so forth. So so these are the names of the letters of the Arabic alphabet. Okay. Um, so I'll go through the entire thing again, and then, um, Bismillah, I'll ask people to, uh, anyone who wants to, um, have a go. Bismillah, you can. Everyone again, repeat. Yeah, the more you repeat, khalas, the more practice you have, um, um, the easier it is going to be, inshallah ta'ala, for you to learn. Yeah. For now, just focus on listening to what I'm saying and relating that to what you're seeing. Okay? So focus on 
listening to what I'm saying and relating that to what you're saying. Okay. Alif. Alif. Ba. Ba. Ta. 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 Jim. Jim. Ha. 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 Dal. 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 Ra. Ra. Za. Za. Or Zay. Seen. Seen. Sheen. Sheen. Sod. Sod. Dod. Dod. Ta. Ta. Va. Va. Ayn. Ayn. Ghayn. Ghayn. Fa. Fa. Qaf. Qaf. Kaf. Kaf. Lam. Lam. Meem. Meem. Noon. Noon. Wow. 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 Ha. Just breathe out. Ha. Ha. Again, just let the sound out. Ah. Ah. So this is the Hamza. Hamza. Ya. Ya. Yeah, that's the same. Yeah. Questions. Bismillah. Questions? <clears throat> Any questions? Anyone wants to have a go? Anyone wants to have a go? Bismillah. Yes. Bismillah. Ali? Uh, Mahmish, I can't hear you. Um, you need to adjust your microphone again, please. Just one second. Um, okay, Fauzia, go ahead, please. Oh, Alif. You, you can hear her. Alif, ba. Oh, sorry, what's the problem then? Just a second. Um, uh, it seems fine. We can, can you hear me now? I'm not able to hear you. Can it? Um, let me do something. Let me go out of the meeting and come back in and see if that works, inshallah ta'ala. Just give me one second. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum Yeah, the problem was on my end. Apologies. Uh, just a second. Let me share the screen again. Um, yes, Mahwish, uh, Bismillah. You volunteered first. Go ahead, please. Okay. So one by one, we're just doing the, the names of the letters, isn't it? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Alif, Ba, Ta, Sa, Again, mean, no, wait, 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 wait. Sa, sa, sa. sa. Yeah, with your tongue sa, between the teeth. Sa, sa. Good. Jim, 
Again, with the tongue between the teeth. Va, 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 va. Good. Ain, ain. Okay, don't say ah, ain. Or don't say ain. Say ain, a, ain, ain. Good. Ain, ain, fa, of, ta, lam, mim, nun, wow. Not wow. Not wow. What? What? Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Ha. Hamza. Ya. Ya. Hamza with a ha. Hamza. Hamza. Not Hamza. Ha. Hamza. Hamza. Okay. Hamza. Ya. Ya. Good. Good. Jazakallah khairan. Anyone else? Anyone else who wants to go next? Yeah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah. Okay, uh, Fauzia, you can go next, please. Yes, Tariq, go ahead. Alif. Hmm? Za. Hmm? Alif. Za. Sa. Sa. Not sa. G this is not a seed. So just a second. Not a sa. With your tongue between the teeth. Sa. 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 Again? Sa. No, not sa. Look. Look, look, look at me. Yeah, tongue between the teeth. Sa. Sa. Again? Sa. Yeah, but your tongue shouldn't like the you shouldn't ha have a forceful connection with that with the teeth. It's very light. Sa. Sa. Ta. Ta. Okay, good. Carry on. Ta. Sa. Shim. Ha. Mm. Ha. Mm. Zal. Zal. Not ra. Zal. Again. Again. Tongue between the teeth. It's not Zal. Za. Zal. La. Zal. Zal. No, no. Tariq, can you tell? Okay, if I said Zal. And Zal, can you tell the difference? Um, let me try. Zal. No, no, no. Again? Zal. No. See, what you're saying is Zal. No. That's a Zal. Za. This is that. Za. There's something ringing in the background. Yeah. Zal. No, see, see, Tarek, it's not Zal. So, sorry, whose is it ringing? Is it yours, Tarek? Yes, it is. I just can't stop it at the moment. <laughs> you can't stop it. Okay. Uh, okay, we, I'll, I'll, I'll see once the sound is finished, inshallah. Okay, sorry. Um, uh, Fauzia, Fauzia, go ahead, please. Alif, ba, ta, sa, jim, ha, kha, dal, dal, ra, za, sin, shin, sod, dod, ta, dha, ain, ain, fa, qaf, kaf, Lam, Mim, Noon, Wow, Ha, Hamza, Ya, Ya. Yes, that's good. Good. Um, Tariq, are you okay now? Yep. Oh, okay, Bismillah. So do the the again, Zal. Sorry? <coughs> Tariq, are you there? 
Yeah, can you hear me? Okay, go ahead. Yes, go ahead, please. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Zal. Not not Zal. 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 Okay, can you? Zal. So are you able to tell the difference though? Are you able to tell the difference? If I said the and za, can you tell the difference? Yep. The first ah, one is so the first one is not. Yes, yeah. Yeah. So your tongue needs to be between the teeth. The za, when you say the za, your tongue is behind the bottom teeth. Z, z, za. Yeah. Your tongue needs to be between your between your two teeth, between your jaws. The, the, the. So forget the zal. Just say the okay. with your tongue between the teeth. The, the. No, your tongue needs to be between the teeth. That's not between the teeth, is it? The. the. Okay, carry on. The. Okay, carry on. Zal. Ra. The. Seen, Shane, Zod, Zod. Not Zod. Zod. This is this is it's not Zod. It's Bo, Bod. Zod. Again. Zod. Not Zod. There is no Za here. This is a Bod. Bo, Bod. Zod. Again. Zod. You're saying Za. Can you tell? I'm trying, but it's not working. From the back, from the back of, don't say za. Ba, ba, from the back of your Zod. 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 Ain. Ain. Fa. Of. Kaf. Lam. Meme, noon, wow, ha, hamza, ya, ya. Jazakallah khairan. That's fine, inshallah ta'ala. Um, Bismillah. Um, so this is the alphabet, okay? 28 letters plus the alif. 28 letters plus the alif. This is the Arabic alphabet. Yeah, so these are the names of the letters, not necessarily the sounds. In some instances, they may be one and the same, but these are the names of the letters. For example, in English, you have A, B, C. Those are the names of the letter. Yeah, but when you articulate them, you don't say that. So, for example, when you say bat, you don't say B-A-T, you say bat. So you articulate the sounds together, not the names. Okay. Um... So we are going to now work, inshallah ta'ala, on recognizing these letters. Recognizing these letters when they come together to form words. Yeah. So, so for example, the entirety of the Quran, the, the Quran is made up of ayah, is made up of surah, uh, plural of surah, is made up of surahs. And the surahs are made up of ayat, verses. And these ayat are made up of kalimat, words. These words are made up of huruf, letters. So the fundamental building block of the language in and of itself are these letters. Everything in the language comes forth from these letters, from these letters. And when these letters come together um, in, proper, uh, in proper order, they form meaningful words. And when these, pro pro when these so words... Sorry. Yes, sorry. Sorry for the interruption, but I think... Sorry for the interruption, but I think we can still see just the letters. I think you are, you know, moving the slides further. Are you able to see if I move it now? Yes. Okay. So these letters, Jazakallah khairan. So these letters, when they come, come together to form meaningful words, and these meaningful words, when they come together, they form meaningful sentences. So this is, so the, the, langu the language is built on the basis of these letters conveying meaning when they come together. So thereby, first and foremost, for us to be able to read, we need to recognize what happens when these letters come together. 
how these letters come together. So again, we are still wor working on the uh, recognizing the letter in and of itself, not necessarily talking about the sound, just fo focusing on recognizing these letters. And the in, and in this page, letters have been put together in different ways. And all we need to do is identify which letter they are, which letter they are on the basis of these letters which you have looked at of the alphabet, okay? So for example, this is the alif, alif. And then this is lam alif, lam alif. This is another way of writing lam alif. Both both are the same. Lam alif, lam alif. Yeah, you would write it like this in a specific circumstance and write it like this in a specific circumstance. We don't need to worry about that just yet. But yeah, this is a lam alif and this is a lam alif. And this is a ba alif. Ba alif. And again, this is the same. Lam alif, lam alif, alam. Likewise, again, alam alif. This is a mim ha. A mim ha. You'll usually not find it written like this. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, um, you, uh, yeah. Um, in some instances, you might, but that's a mim first and then a ha. You begin with the mim and then do the ha. Okay. Mim ha. Lam alif. Ba, lam, ba. This is a calf, okay? The, the calf which is written by itself like this is, a, is written like this in the middle of a word or the beginning of a word. That's how it's written at the end of a word. Um, so this is also a calf. Calf. Calf, likewise. Calf, ba. Calf, ba. Likewise, calf, ba. Same. Calf, alif. Kaf alif. Likewise, kaf alif. Yeah. Ba kaf ta. Ba kaf ta. Ta kaf tha. Okay. Everyone, repeat after me. Okay. Repeat after me. Um. Okay. Even if you know these letters, try to listen to my sound because I'm trying to um articulate it how you would articulate it properly in Arabic. Um. And, and and not how you do it in Urdu, okay? Ba, ta, tha, noon, ya, ba, alif, ba, alif, noon, alif, ta, alif, ya, alif, tha, alif, ba, sin, ya, sin, noon, sin, ta, Sin, tha, sin, tha. Again, tha, tha, tongue between your teeth. Tha, jim, ta, ha, ta, ha, ta, ha. Noon, kha, noon, kha. Ya, ha, ya, ha. Ba, jim, ba, jim. Ya, Meem, ya, meem. This is also ba. Ba, meem. And you wouldn't find it like this in the Quran. Yeah. Ba, meem, noon, meem, ta, meem. Tha, meem, ba, ya, 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 noon, ya, ta, ya, tha, ya, Noon, ba, lam, ta, noon, lam, ba, ya, lam, ya, ta, lam, sa, sa, lam, noon, ba, noon. Okay? So, Mr. Allah, we're going to practice this, inshallah ta'ala. Going to practice this. Bismillah. Go ahead. Yeah, put yourself on the spot. No, no big deal. Yeah. I'll help you, inshallah. Go ahead. Yes, Mahfouz, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Alif, Lam Alif, Lam Alif, Ba Alif, Lam Alif, Lam. Lam Alif, Mim Ha, Lam Alif, Ba Lam Ba, K 
كاف 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 با كاف با كاف ألف كاف ألف با كاف تا تا كاف ثا 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 با تا ثا نون يا با ألف نون ألف دو دو با تا ثا با تا ثا نون يا با ألف نون ألف تا ألف يا ألف ثا ألف با سين يا سين نون سين تا سين ثا سين ثا جيم تا حا نون حا يا حا با جيم يا ميم نون با ميم نون ميم تا ميم ثا ميم با يا 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 نون يا تا يا ثا يا نون با لام تا نون لام با يا لام يا تا لام ثا ثا لام نون با نون جزاك الله خيرا that's good anyone else wants to try بسم الله في الدوس go ahead please السلام عليكم عليكم السلام ورحمة الله ألف لام ألف لام ألف با ألف لام ألف لام لام ألف ميم ها لام ألف با لام با كاف 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 با كاف با كاف ألف كاف ألف با كاف تا تا كاف سا با تا سا نون يا با ألف نون ألف تا ألف Okay, just yeah. a second. Just a second. Sorry, mm -hmm. I'll just point something out. Say ba ta sa. Ba ta sa. Okay, yours is not too. Um, um, is is mm -hmm. is fine. Uh, mm -hmm. but but generally people like, like those of us who have um 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 uh, connection with Urdu, uh, in Urdu everything tends to be raised. Ba ta sa. Like this is how we speak in Urdu. Aap aaj aat. Everything is raised in Urdu. In Arabic, it's not like that. You say ba, not ba, ba. Like you say ta, not ta. You say tha, not tha. Ba, ta, tha. So it's is so it so bring the sound out. Don't do ah inside your mouth. Ah to raise the sound inside your mouth. Say ba. Bring the sound out. Just channel it out. Ba. Ba. Da. Good, excellent. Da. Ah, yeah, good, very good. Yeah, the same for all letters, all letters. Yeah, generally speaking, when we learn the Urdu alphabet, everything is raised. Everything is right. raised. In Arabic, it's not like that. You need to bring the sound out of your mouth. Ba, ta, sa. Go ahead. Ba, ta, sa, noon, ya, ba, alif, noon, alif, ta, Alif, ya alif, sa alif, ba sa ba sin, ya sin, zo sin. No 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 that's that's a noon. Oh sorry, noon. Yeah, it's, it's connected. Yeah yeah. Yeah, noon sin, to sin. Not ta not ta 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 ta. Okay. Ta, sin, so, sin. Again, like it's not not so. Sa, sa, sa. Okay. Good. Sa, 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 jim, to, to, jim, to, ha, ta, ta. Yeah, just open your mouth and let the sound go. Ta, ta, ha. Good. Right. Good. Noon, ko. 
Ya, ha. Not ha. 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 Ya, ha. Ba. Oh, sorry. Ba. Jeeb. I think it will take some time because, you know, I've been reading it the same way since like. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about yeah. it. That's that's how we are as human beings. That's uh, that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. We are not computers. Mm -hmm. You just change the code and now it does what you want it to do. Everything yeah. takes time and practice and effort. Yeah. Just yeah. Like, go ahead. Ba, ba, jeem. Ya, meem. Ba, meem. Noon mean. Ta mean. Ta mean. Ba. Sorry. Uh, that's ba, right? Ba. Ba ya. Ya ya. Noon ya. Ta ya. Seen. Uh, sorry. Sa ya. Sa. Sa. Sa, sa, ya. Noon, ba, sorry. Noon, ba, lam. Ta, noon, lam. Is it noon in between? Yeah, it's a noon. Yeah. Ta, noon, lam. Ta, noon, lam. Ba, uh, sorry. Ba, ya, lam. Ya, ta, lam. Sa, sa, lam. Noon, ba, noon. Say lam. Lam. Yeah, don't say lam. Lam, lam, okay? Lam. Okay. Good. Jazakallah um, khairan. Um, so, um, what we will do before we finish, I'll just point something out quickly, inshallah ta'ala. So you'll be able to, um, what I would recommend is to download this app. So practice what we've done today, inshallah ta'ala. But the key thing for you to practice is this. So download these apps, inshallah ta'ala. These apps are good for the Quran. Okay, the Arabic Quran. Yeah, the Arab, proper Arabic Quran. We're going, we'll, inshallah ta'ala, we'll get used to reading it over a period of time, inshallah. So these two, depending upon if you have an Apple device or an Android device, these are the apps. They are the same app. Yeah, it's just one is an Android and the other is an Apple. So, so download these apps. Okay, the Quran for Android app or the Quran by Quran.com um, in Apple. Okay, download these apps. So this is how it will look like. Um, uh, is it? Okay. So this is how the app would be. It's I've, I've got it on my computer as well. You can find it in your um, um, Microsoft Store as well for if you want it on your computer. Um, so this is how the app opens up. So what I want you to do is, so this app is very good because what I want you to do is basically, so for example, there is the, this is Surat Al-Fatiha. What I want you to do is to not worry about reciting it now. All I want you to do is to look at this and uh, listen to a reciter, which I'm going to point out. Listen to him reciting and just follow along. See if you are able to recognize the letters. That is all I want you to do. Okay, so if he reads Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, I want you to look and uh, listen to that and identify. Oh, that's the ba, that's the seen, that's the meme. Ba sama, yeah. Then Bismillahi, the lamb, and then the ha, ar rahman. So what I want you to do is just identify the letters. Yeah, from the sounds that you hear of the recitation, just identify the letters so that you get used to recognizing letters. You just get used to putting two and two together. Okay, so if you open this app, this is how it will open. So if you go into settings, um, go into settings here. Um, so if you come down, um, audio manager. So what I want you to do 
is to go down, select Dr. Ayman Suwaid. Dr. Ayman Suwaid. His recitation is the best. Okay. Allah Ta'ala Alam is generally considered to be the most knowledgeable person as it relates to the recitation of the Quran alive today. Uh, Hafizahullah Ta'ala. He's a Syrian. He's a Syrian scholar who uh, lives in Jeddah now. So if you go here, if you go into Ayman, Dr. Ayman Suwaid's recitation, you can go and download all of the surahs at once. Yeah, download all and you can download from Fatiha to An-Nas. So once you've downloaded, what you can do is you can now go back to the, what's up, this, this here will show you. But yeah, and you can just listen to him reciting and he recites crystal clear crystal clear okay so listen to his recitation at least daily once yeah ideally at least three times um listen to it and just identify the sounds of the letters i don't want you to like i'm not expecting you to know everything oh, what, what does that mean what does that sign mean what does this sign mean don't, don't worry about that at all. There's no need for you to worry about that now. We haven't done that yet, okay? There's no need for you to worry about that. All I want you to do is be able to identify the letters by listening to the sounds of the letters. That's all. And how they come in the Quran. That's all. Does that make sense? Yes, no? So basically, I just want to uh, understand that, you know, if I have understood you correctly. So what you want us to do is that uh, just by listening, we should know what word, uh, you know, what alphabet the reciter is saying, right? Yeah, just the letters, just the letters. I just want you to focus on identifying the sounds of the letters. I don't want you to worry about the Fatha, the Makasra, the Shadda, the Suku. No, don't worry about all of that now. Don't. All you're listening is the sound of the letter. Ah, can I identify this ba when he recites? Can I identify the scene when he's reciting, the meme? That's that's all. Okay? So listen to the recitation and try to identify the letter which you see in front of you. Okay? So do this for this page and the other page which you recited today, inshallah. Where is the other page? Yeah? This is the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, the first five pages. So if you can do this for these two pages, the more you do it, the more comfortable you'll be, the more comfortable you'll be in identifying the letters. Ah, this letter. Ah, okay. Ah, makes sense. Okay. So you get used to the sound and you get used to the letter and how it is written. Okay. Any questions? So with that, we'll finish it there. So to just do this, inshallah ta'ala, um, for the coming week. For the coming week. And we will take it from there, inshallah ta'ala. Any questions before we finish? Is there an option to delay the class by 15 hour due to Juma Salah? Um, um, yes, we will, uh, I, I completely understand the question. It's just, um, I, I'm, I'll, I'll see inshallah because the um, people from different parts of the world are attending the class. So um, yeah. It's, I'll, um, I'll see, inshallah ta'ala, I'll see what can be done. Uh, if not, khair, inshallah ta'ala, there's always the recording, inshallah, which you can go back to as well, worst case scenario. Um, so we'll, we'll see, we'll, we'll lo look at that, inshallah. Any other questions before we finish? Any other questions? So, yes, Ustad, I had one question, like, you know, when you informed us about, you know, you gave a beautiful introduction to Arabic, but uh, we are still left to with your introduction. Like, you know, as you said that you studied Arabic under your Pakistani teachers, you have learned. So, like, we don't know anything about you. At least I don't know anything. So, you know, if you could just share a little bit about you and, like, uh, about your studies and everything. Uh, uh, if you wish. Uh, in, inshallah, I'll, I'll just probably get the admin to post my bio in the group. Inshallah, I don't want to. That's, there's nothing I, 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 I want to say about myself. Inshallah, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm just, uh, yeah, yeah. Very briefly, I'm, I'm from India. I spent some time in the UK. 
um, um, where I got to study with my teachers. Um, so I was there for around 11 years. Um, and nine of those years I was studying with my teachers, one of them being the teacher I mentioned, um, Sheikh Harun Hanif, um, um, from, uh, he's originally from Pakistan, and uh, Sheikh Ibrahim Osiefa, who's originally from Nigeria, both of them from um, born and brought up in Liverpool. Um, so that's where I was. Uh, I studied with them for my, around nine years, and then I've been, uh, then I, I, I've traveled. So I'm, I'm in Turkey now in Istanbul. I've been studying for the past two years, um, three years almost now, well, three years um, here with the Syrian scholars here. So that's, that's about myself. Yeah. So I'm here with my family, my wife and kids. Okay. Yeah, with my wife and kids. I live here in Turkey now for a while. Um, so how do we select the reciter you mentioned? You go into the settings and you can select it. Or even at the bottom of the page, it'll come up where this is. I'm on the computer, so it's... Uh, so here... Okay, so you can select it here as well at the bottom. So, Dr. Ayman Suwaid here. Dr. Ayman Suwaid, you can select that as well from the bottom of the page. Okay. So, khair inshallah ta'ala. We'll finish here and we'll carry on bithnillah ta'ala next week inshallah ta'ala. Um, I've seen in the message if we move the class, then it becomes difficult for someone to pick up their kids. So, yeah. Um, okay, khair inshallah ta'ala. Uh, we'll finish here, and if there's any other questions, please feel to ask in the group, inshallah ta'ala. Any questions, anything, please feel free to ask in the groups, inshallah ta'ala. We'll finish here and carry on next week, bithnillah ta'ala. Allahumma ya fattahu ya alimu, iftah lana fathan qariba, iftah lana fathan qariba, iftah lana fathan qariba. Allahumma barik lana fi rajaba wa sha'ban, wa balikna ramadan, wa jazallahu anna sayyidana muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama ma huwa ahlu. وجزاكم الله كل خير والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة